gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire and I'm here to show you the Castles of Burgundy, the dice game. So we've already played the card game on this channel, but as you're going to see, the dice game is a much more easy to set up and compact solo game. So all you need to play Castles of Burgundy, the dice game is one of these little duchy sheets. There are actually four different ones for a different hex configuration, so you can play slightly different games. There's A, B, C, and D. We're just going to go with A. So you need one of these sheets. They're also double-sided, nice. Um, a writing utensil. So the box comes with like little pencils. They're pretty decent little golf pencils, but we're using pen to make it easier for you guys to see what I'm doing. And these five dice, that's it. You put this stuff out on some kind of surface and you just start to play. So one of the things that's special about solo mode is that the time in this game is determined along these round trackers, but there's only eight rounds in each uh, phase of the solo game. So I just went ahead and colored in the bottom two boxes in these rows to remind myself that they are off limits. In the multiplayer version of Castles of Burgundy Dice, you roll this die for time. So sometimes you get one hourglass and sometimes you get two and it can lengthen or shorten your game, depending on what you're rolling. These also enable you to sell commodities. So we are gonna be rolling this die to see if we can sell commodities or not on a given turn. However, um, and we'll get to that. However, we're always just gonna have eight rounds. So the time doesn't actually matter in this particular variant. So as is standard for a Castles of Burgundy game, in Castles of Burgundy, the dice game, you are going into it with the goal of getting the most victory points that you can. So across these uh, 24 rounds, I'm gonna be trying to get as many victory points as possible. And victory points are gonna happen by filling in as many hexes on this board as I can. So you get points for completing um, areas of adjacent hexes of the same color. So if I complete this area, which is two, I will score for two, depending on what round I'm in. Um, if I complete this area, that's a really big score, especially if I can get it early. So you can score by filling in areas with the same colored adjacent hexes. You can get victory points by completing all hexes of the same color. So there are bonuses for completing all the purple hexes, all the gray hexes, all the blue, orange, dark green, or light green slash yellow. So basically all of these could offer bonuses if I can fill them all up. And you can also earn victory points for selling commodities, which is something that we will do at some point during this game and that I'll explain at that time, just because it's, I don't wanna throw all the rules at you just right away. So our first move of the game is gonna to be to choose which of these castles on these dark green hexes we want to start in. And this decision matters because you can only build into hexes that are adjacent to hexes that you've already uh, put numbers in. So when I put, if I put something here, these are my only options for the next turn. Whereas if I put something here, these are my options. So if I wanted to go for this big orange combo right away, I might make a different decision. The other thing that is um, interesting about this is that you get a different starting bonus depending on which castle hex you choose. If I choose this one, I'll get a commodity, which I can try to sell later for points. If I choose this one, I'll get a silver. And I can use a silver when we roll dice. I only get to pick two dice to make a combo off of. But if I have a silver, I can actually spend it to make two combos, if possible, off of the dice. This one is a monk. Monk allows you to ignore color. So there are specific color and dice combinations that are acceptable for me to fill hexes. And that's something that's gonna be important. And this one is a worker. The worker gives you the option to just pretend that any number die is whatever number you want. So workers allow you to manipulate pip number, monks allow you to manipulate die color, which is something that we're gonna wanna use later. So I usually find that I like to have workers and a lot of them early. So I'm actually gonna start right here. So I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna circle this worker right here, because that was my bonus for taking this green castle for now. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our very first turn. So I'm gonna roll all five of these dice. And here's what I've got. What I've got is a lot of yellow. All right, so what's gonna be interesting about the yellow is that, so there are different placement conditions 
for each of these um, hexes. So in order to put something with a purple, I'm gonna need to combine a purple dye with a one or two. For a silver color, a gray colored dye, I need to combine gray with a three or four to fill a gray space. For blue, I'll need a blue dye face with a five or a six. Orange, it doesn't matter as long as it's an orange dye paired with a number that is not otherwise in that combination of hexes. So like for example, if I put a two here, then I would need to put something different for all these other ones. They have to all be different numbers. Um, for green, other than the starting one, in order to move into a green, it needs, I need to have a die, I need to have the green die face, as well as a pip number that matches a hex that's touching the castle. So you want a lot of variety around the castles to give you some options. And this one, I just have to put multiples of the same number in that pasture. Yikes. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give myself the option to kind of move up this way into orange. I am going to take these two dice. Also, here's just, it's a round. I'm gonna mark off my round right now. I'm never gonna mark off multiple times because that's not in the solar rules, but I marked off my round and I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna put a four. No, I would four right here. That one's incomplete, we'll just have to remember that. So here's a four, it's now touching this orange, which will enable me to build out that way if I so choose. And that was an entire round. I rolled the dice, picked a combo, rolled with it. And it's really a simple game, it's just a matter of trying to fill things in appropriately. So now let's roll again and see what we get. Oh nice, okay. So much as I would like to work, let's mark off our time since that's our second round. So this is, Set off to the side. All right, so I can do an orange three and start working on this sweet, sweet orange combo. Or since I have it right now, I can actually take this and do a yellow four, which is what I think I'm actually going to do. So what I, that means that I have completed this little set of hexes. So I'm gonna score for that. So we're gonna go over here and see these two hexes. I just completed a two hex spot. That's gonna be worth four victory points except that I'm gonna get a special bonus because when you complete a pasture section, your bonus, instead of like a resource to use in the game, is actually a multiplication of your victory points. So in this case, I earned four victory points and I'm gonna multiply them by two for a total of eight points. So that was pretty good. So that was round two. Let's play another round. Okay. So this doesn't actually matter in this particular situation because um, we have eight rounds per period in the solo game. But if I had commodities, I could ship them for money and victory points. So when I have commodities and roll this, we'll talk. But for now, we're gonna just mark off this round. So here are my choices. I have a purple two, which is a valid combination. I also have a gray four, which is another valid combination. Okay. I think the best thing for me to do though is because I really have to get a monk if I can, so I like to fill in the purple. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and I also like building out, so I have lots of movement options. I'm gonna go ahead and take the purple too. So I'm gonna put it right there. So that is filled in. We'll roll again. Okay, so this time I had a yellow six, a purple one, and we'll just mark off our time. So this is actually perfect because the purple one can go right here. So you can put a one or a two in the purple space. So we're gonna go ahead and fill in that purple, which gives us another four points because we just completed a hex area. And this time I'm gonna get a monk, which lets me manipulate the color value on one of the die faces if there's something I'm really itching to fill in. So we are now halfway through the first round. This game goes very quickly. All right, so once again, we'll mark off our time. And let's see what we got. So I have a yellow two and a gray four. Ooh. Okay, so I could keep kind of building up this way. I'm not sure that's actually what I wanna do because I'd like to get some money. That's very convenient at times because there've been multiple occasions already where I've wanted a combo that I didn't get. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the gray four. I'm gonna put it right here. 
Perfect. So now we'll roll again. So again, if I had commodities to sell, this would be great. As it stands, we're just gonna mark off around. And here are my die values. So I have a gray and an orange, and my die values are two and six. So I think what I'm gonna do is there's basically no way I'm gonna finish this combo right now, but once I do finish it, it's still worth quite a few points next round. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this, yeah, this orange die, and I'm gonna use it with, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Let's use it with the six, because it's fun. Let's go for it. Hope I don't do that again. So I'm gonna start work on this because it seems like it's pretty valuable. And this is always worth one, so there's no point rushing. Okay, so this time, We'll move this over, mark off our time. I don't have any commodities yet. Once again, that'd be a good thing to start thinking about. So at least I can show you how it works. Okay, so now we have a different kind of situation where neither of these combos is particularly good for me. That was a purple. No, that was a blue. What was that? All right, so I checked my footage that definitely was a purple. So now we are in a different kind of situation where purple two is in fact legal, except the problem is I'm not touching any purples, which means I can't put anything in a purple hex. Grays can only be placed with threes or fours, which means that this gray is not gonna be doing me much good, except I have some tools to help me. So just so you know, if you're in a situation where none of your die combos work, all you do is you don't place anything in any hexes for that round, but you do get to circle a worker because the worker is there to bail you out. So I think what I'm going to do, I have two choices. Yeah, I know what I'm going to do. So I'm going to spend my worker because the worker allows you to manipulate a pip number. So I'm going to keep this gray die and I'm going to count this two as a three or four using my worker. So let's just say he's a four, no big deal. And so now this gray chunk is filled in. So it's gonna be four points for me. And the bonus for getting a gray is a silver. So the silver will benefit me later as well. So that is round seven. Now let's have round eight. See what I got. Okay, so we'll just put the time over here. Mark it off. Now I have a green and an orange and I have two fives. So, ooh. Okay, I'm gonna do something tricky, partially just to show it off to you guys because I feel like that's a good thing to do. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place an orange five right here because a six and a five are different and therefore I can put it there. Then I'm actually going to go ahead and spend my silver. What the silver allows you to do is it allows you to use two dice combos on the same turn. You can actually, if I wanted to, I can combine this orange and then I can combine this green with a five as well because it's technically a different dice combo. I can't do orange and the five twice. You can't do the same dice twice but you can pair one die with two different dice or you can do two totally different pairs. So in this case, I'm gonna do a different pair because I'm gonna take this dark green with the five and go ahead and cross this off because it's going to get me a commodity and I want to show you how commodities work. I'm tired of rolling all these double uh, hourglasses not being able to actually demonstrate that. So that is what we have done with this turn. So that is the end of the first phase of the game. And I'm going to now add up my total for this first round. So I got 16, 17 points in the first round of the game. All right, so let's move into round two and see how it goes. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mark off our time. All right, and now I have some choices. So I have a two and a four and a blue and a gray. 
So this isn't actually a super ideal because I could do a gray and a four, except that none of the hexes that I'm working on right now are touching anything gray. So I'd have to get all the way up here and that's not gonna actually work. A blue two is also not going to work because I need a five or six to go with a blue. So I can either take a worker or use a power. I think what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna go ahead and use up this monk because the monk allows you to ignore color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pretend that this five is orange and put a four here because I wanna keep working at this orange area because if I can finish it in this round, it's worth a whopping 10 points and I'm just not gonna turn that down. I think that's awesome. Also, if I'm building up this way, I'll eventually hit that other gray and that gray will stop being a problem. So that's what I'm gonna do for this turn. So here's another turn. Let's see what we get. Okay, so another normal time marker. So mark this off. So now we have a blue five and a gray four. So once again, things aren't quite ideal on the um, touching things that are gray, but that's okay because I can place a blue. So I think what I'm gonna do is in order to make sure that all my options stay open, because right now I can touch most colors except for purple and gray, I need to build in those directions. I'm gonna go ahead and put the blue five right up here. And that's my turn. Let's roll again. Yikes, okay. So we have another time marker. So we'll just put that off to the side, a normal one. Uh, okay, so this is not great. I maybe didn't build this as strategically as I should have. So we have a gray four and a purple three, neither of which, and I mean, I could, I'm not touching anything gray or anything purple that I can do anything with. So basically I am stuck. So I can't do anything legal with these dice and I don't have any special tools or powers that are gonna let me keep going with that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna circle a worker. So basically because I'm not placing something this turn, my, my um, we're sorry about that pay is a worker to use on a future turn. So no round is fully wasted. All right, so let's roll it in. Okay, so mark off the time. So now we have orange two, maybe, or we have a green, but I'm not touching anything green right now, so that's not gonna work. So we're definitely, definitely rolling with the orange two because that completes this whole section, which is fantastic because it gives me 10 points. And because I completed an orange section, I get another worker. So that means I'm gonna have some further manipulation powers in the future. So let's roll again. All right, so once again, we got a normal time. We'll bring our dice in. So we'll mark our time off. So now I'm looking at blue and purple, a one and a two. So I can actually just build right over into the purple and I think that's what I'm gonna do. So let's just go ahead and put a purple two right here. Now I have access to all colors because that's touching a gray. So my life just got a little bit easier. Nice. All right, so let's roll again. So now I have another time marked off. So here's a five and a blue. I like that. I think I'm gonna go for it. We're gonna do this blue five right here. So this time, because the second round, I only get three points for filling up a combo, but I also get a good. So hopefully we're gonna roll a double hourglass soon to show you guys how that's going to work. Oh, by the way, there's something I missed in the last turn. Remember when I filled in this green hex? That was actually worth one more point, so I should have 18 points over here. I'll put a note about it earlier in the video so you'll have already seen this by the time we get to this point. All right, so we got two more little rounds. I'm hoping I can sell some goods and show you how this goes. Yes, finally. Okay, so let's bring all the dice in. So these two hourglasses, we're gonna mark off the time. 
just one because it's a solo game. However, two hourglasses mean that I can sell off these commodities and I'm absolutely going to do that. So selling off commodities at the beginning of the round means that I get one silver for each commodity I sold as well as two victory points for each commodity I sold for an additional four victory points. So that was pretty sweet. Let's see what we can do about our actual dice. So these double sixes aren't awesome because I can't actually get into any of these green hexes and a six is way too high for a purple. However, I do have a worker. So I'm gonna cross a worker off. I'm gonna count this as one, let's say. And that's gonna complete a purple hex set for me. So that's gonna give me three more points and a monk, which is pretty decent. So that's what I'm gonna do. So now we got one more attempt in this round to get some stuff done. So we pulled all this in. So this is a normal time. We're marking up the last time for this round. Now, let's see what I can do. So I can play the gray five. That seems like a good idea. Yeah, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go for a gray five, because working on gray is a good thing to do. And then I'm actually going to use one of my silvers to do another combo so that I can... Yeah, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go ahead and fill in this little orange with a two, which is gonna give me one point for filling in one hex but most important, I'm gonna pick up another worker for completing a set of orange hexes. So going into this next round, I'm gonna have a little bit more leeway. All right, so let's see how I did in this round. So I got 10, 21. So that's 21 points. And now we're gonna have one more round. We'll set a round, see how it goes. Okay, so if I had goods, I could sell them, but I don't, so we'll X that out. All right, so now I have a blue, a purple, a five, and a four. Hmm. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm definitely going to put a blue five right here. That seems like a good idea. And then, ooh, do I wanna do something like push this further? Yeah. Hmm. You know what, no guts, no glory. We're gonna go a little crazy and we're gonna go ahead and put a five. I can do another combo. So I can put a five or a four here. Let's go ahead and just do the yellow and the four and hope that I get another four to fill in that yellow over here. But I'm doing that also because I want some number variety next to this hex so I can get to it. Okay, let's do it again. All right, so I got one time filled in so now I have a purple and a one and a five. Oh man, and a green. Actually, that's gonna work out pretty good. Okay, so I can either start working on this purple or I can go ahead and just fill in one of the greens because I have a green five right here and it will give me a, another monk. Hmm. No, I'm gonna go for like continued point success. We're gonna put the purple one right here. That's what we're gonna do. Okay, so got a normal time marker. So now I have a blue and a yellow and a four and a one. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna pair this yellow four and just put it there that completes this hex set. So that is two, but I get to double it because it's yellow, so that is four points. So, oh no, not too shabby. Let's roll again. Okay, so we'll mark off our time. Put that to the side. So now I have a two and maybe like a yellow and a four. So I'm definitely gonna take this purple two I'm gonna complete that purple combo for two points and grab another monk. I think that's the best option for me. So I have four more rounds to try to make some stuff happen here. 
Ooh, this is kind of nice. All right, so I'm gonna mark off my time and I'm gonna do this gray five up here. So what that's gonna mean is I'm gonna get a silver, I'm gonna get two points, and since I finally finished all the grays on the board, I'm gonna take this one point. So if I'd managed to do that in the first two rounds, I would've got three points, but since it's round three, I only get one point, which is unfortunate, but that's just the way it is. All right, so all the grays are now full, which is kind of nice. And let's keep it going. All right, so we'll mark off a time. And now I'm dealing with these numbers and these colors. Hmm. Okay, I think that since I have a silver, I'm gonna go ahead and use it. So I'm gonna mark off, because I can use this to get another silver. So I'm gonna pair a green and a two, which I can do since the two is adjacent. That's gonna be one point and one silver. Then I'm gonna cross off the last silver that I earned, and I'm gonna use it to combine, let's say an orange and a five. Let's just do that. So an orange and a five is what we're gonna do. All right, so we'll mark off our time. Let's see what we're working with here. So you can only use one power per turn, so I can't do something crazy like use a monk and then use a silver, and then I'm just stuck with what I have. So what I'm gonna do this time is I'm absolutely going to do an orange and a six to try to fill in this orange bit. And that was my combo for the turn. And then hopefully I can score just a little more on this last turn. It hasn't gone quite so hot as I would have liked. Okay, so here's what I am absolutely going to do. This is my last chance to earn points. So I'm definitely gonna do orange and one, which is still gonna get me a lovely four points and a worker, not that it matters. I didn't actually use my workers enough this, this game. So the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and spin my last silver to do one more combo. So I can either, so I can either finish off purple or finish off orange. Orange is worth more. So I am going to do the orange and the five this time because it's a different combo than orange and one. So it's legal move. Um, in order to place that five here, that gets me one point and then another three points for finishing all of the oranges on the board. And that was my last turn of the game. Okay, so let's add up what I got. So I had eight, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18. So my total points for the whole game were, all right, so that would be 40, 56, 57. So my total points were 57. So that's actually a pretty decent score. According to the solo rules, what we have is if you achieve more than 50 victory points, well done. More than 60, excellent. And 70 or more, incredible. So I'll take a well done. Um, I actually find this game highly engaging. I hope that you guys enjoyed it as well. And this one is so easy to carry, easy to whip out and play. It's really cheap. I got my copy for maybe $15 max. I've seen it on cool stuff for about 10. So if you were just looking for an order filler or a cheap game that's gonna offer you, definitely it's money's worth in terms of entertainment. I think Castles of Burgundy, the dice game is a great choice. Happy gaming.